Miami Hurricanes are working tirelessly to recruit top defensive tackles, but I sure hope at least one of these guys can be the next Vince Wilfork. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and writer for allhurricanes.com. Thank you to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We are free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around that next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. It is a Truth Teller Tuesday. And I'll tell you guys, Mario Cristobal is not the best recruiter in Miami. The best recruiter in Miami is this man because he recruits the top guests here every week, especially on Tuesdays at Locked on Canes. Bruce Warner, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm thrilled with our guest. I told you a while ago I was going to get him on, and this is the perfect time. It's it's Vince Wolfwork. Who I mean, who better than national right, champ, going on, Super Bowl champ, <laughs> big big <laughs> Vince, of course, nas- national champ at Miami, U.S. Yes. Sports Hall of Famer, NFL legend. Even though and, and and Vince, I still liked you a lot, even though you played for the Patriots as a Miami Dolphin fan, and you guys <laughs> just you know beat beat our butts year after year after year. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm good, man. Everything's wonderful. I'm sorry to hear that you was a a Dolphins fan. <laughs> Long <laughs> suffering. Hey. We, we, we've had some great, great moments uh, playing in that division. So some ups and some downs, but uh, all in fun. You know, that's you know, being a Florida boy myself, being able to play against the Dolphins twice a year was uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. I'll, I'll make you nauseous. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I'm a Giants fan. And you know about those Giants two times. Yeah, yeah. I respect. <laughs> you had to I bring that up, Bruce. I have, I Even though they stink them. now, but they yeah. did beat you guys twice. Beat me twice. Yeah, I could have had four Super Bowls instead of two. So, yeah. Um, kudos to you guys. What a great – you know, I love the Giants organization. Like, they, it's just like they first class when it comes to stuff. And it's a reason that they have the history that they do, you know. Um, they, they know how to get it done, so – uh, like I say, took two of them from me, so I can't, <laughs> I can't sit here and say too much. As you can imagine, there's so much we can get into with Vince yes. Wilfork, and we will. We'll try to get into all of it or as much as we can. But you know, I do want to start, Vince, from you know now that you're uh, you're obviously still a big University of Miami football mm-hmm. fan. We've had some lean years and some tough years. Um, what are your impressions so far of Mario Cristobal, and do you think things are heading in the right direction now? I, I love what Mario is doing. Um, and people have to understand, like, things take time. And a lot of times people don't have patience in life, you know. And uh, being a college coach is a tough coach nowadays with the portal and all that, you know, going on. But the one thing I love about Mario is discipline and he know what it takes. You know, he's been in the University of Miami program. He's been around Alabama, been around success his whole coaching career and playing career. So, He's not lacking of any of that, you know, it's, and now he's coming back down where, you know, down South to the bottom where he know, Hey, recruiting is key. You know, if we can keep our Florida boys in, you know, in stay down South. And uh, if we can do that, I think we got away from that um, for, you know, too long. And I think that's one of the things I love about him is because he's coming back and he's bringing that. He know where it starts. You know, when he was in Alabama, he understood that, hey, Nick Saban coming down south to pluck these guys out of Florida, but why? So I love seeing us trying to say uh, South Florida, try to stay Florida um, and recruit. And and I think he's been doing a pretty good job, you know. Um, everybody won't ink his success, you know, um, but it doesn't work like that. So I'm happy what I'm seeing with him. Um, I'm glad we're starting to, you know, see the recruits come in, but it's 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 gonna take it's gonna take some time. So um, all I all I ask is I don't want to have a team that I see quit, you know. Yeah. And I mean, a Mario Cristobal team, I don't think you'll see that. You you you've seen dog because 
a team takes the characteristics of their head coach, you know. And I know Mario, he's a tough son of a gun. So I know we're going to have some tough uh, team. We're going to have a tough team. We'll always have a tough team and competitive. That's the main thing, competitive. It's just uh, being able to compete at the highest level, uh, no matter who you're playing, just being able to compete. Um, and I think the more um, we start getting the recruits rolling in, the more Mario starts having his handprint on his system, how he want to run it, how he want to do things. I think we start seeing some light at the end of the tunnel, and hopefully we can bring the Canes back. Yeah, they need to win, though. Yeah. So that's first and foremost. You got to win. They need to win. They can't go seven and six again this year. Yeah, I, I understand that, but it's it's like how are you going seven and six? You see what I'm saying? Like, I, trust me, winning is first and foremost. That's how you get recruits in. We, you got to be able to win. But it's a difference from being seven to six. And, you know, the games that you lost is two points, three points, tough opponents. Then you're going seven to six and, you know, you drop it to, uh, you know, I don't know, a, a school that's not even on the map. You know, right. that's the difference, you know. So winning is key. Uh, recruit come with winning, you know. And can, can, can I, can I, by the way, can I, can I recruit you onto the coaching staff? Cause I, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> coaching, you know, that I'll help much as I could, but coaching, I that's too much time consuming. But yeah, I love the Hurricanes. You know, I've been around them a lot last year. You know, I told Mario I'd come around, but I travel a lot and I move around a lot. So uh, I spent a lot of time down there last year doing the season, early part of the season and stuff, and just to see how they work, see how they run, and all that stuff. I like what I see. Um, the kids want to play for Mario. That's the thing. You, you don't see kids that saying, "I ah, f him. I'm not doing it. I'm not a one." No, 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 no. Kids want to play, and I just see so much growth in that team. And the problem we have last year is we have some great players on that team, but the thing is, they're young. We need to find an identity. We need to find leadership. They need to understand who our leaders and and what their leadership qualities are. Mm -hmm. So when you have a bunch of team that's just running around and doing all this right here and everybody's young, so you're looking at each other like, okay, who's going to say something? Who's going to lead us? Like you, you know? So I look for this year to be a lot different because those younger guys that play like Bang and those guys that made those plays and and show all of us um, that they are cap they are came, you know, they are came um, bred this year is going to be different for them. So that leadership, I think the leadership have to come up and they have to understand what it takes to lead. I I don't think that we do not have it. We have it. They're just young and they have to understand what it takes to be a leader. And once I, I think once we get that, you're going to see a totally different team as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just something about playing for one another, one another. And you're growing together. You know, we got a bunch of guys that was freshmen, sophomores. Not now, we, you know, they sophomores, juniors. Now they're starting to grow together. They're starting to put in the work that they've seen they've done these past two, three years. It's, it's starting to come together. So now you start to have that leadership and, and all of that stuff. You're starting to play for one another because it's family, you know. Yeah. Um, now, uh, and I think that's where we're at now. So those young guys, they have to raise the rise to the occasion and understand they're put in the hot water right off the bat. You don't have two, yeah. three years and your turn to be a captain or a lead. Like, no, you need to learn how to be in the leader right now as a freshman and as a sophomore because that's your team. They have to understand that. And once they understand that, you will see a different ball club down here at UM. And we also lose a lot of guys constantly to the draft probably before they should even leave. Like the two yeah. these who didn't run too well, and Leonard Taylor, I don't. He didn't really do much when he was here. I don't think any of those three guys should have left, but they did. So we have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I agree. I don't think they should have left. But it, you know, it's, it's so hard now. You know, is when I play, we we knew like, hey, if you win and play ball, that'll take care of itself. You're gonna be three years and you're gonna be gone, or you're gonna be four years, you're gonna be gone. But that wasn't nothing that we ever really really cared about. Our goal was. We want to beat everybody brains in in college. We're going to talk to you and tell you how good we are, and we're going to show it to you. And we know when it's time to get drafted and to come by, we, we don't really have to go to Indy. They'll come to us because everybody want to come to South Beach. So 
We'll wait down here for you guys to come see us down here. And then we'll put on our showcase here on our turf. You know, that's how we handle things. We didn't have nobody in our ear saying, hey, you need to do this. You project. Like, we didn't care about that because we were so much a close-knit family. All we wanted to do is play with each other. We never wanted to end, you know, like we hurricanes. We know what it stood for before us. And we was going to make sure we, we carry that torch. So I'm not so sure that the winning, which is important to these guys, is, is getting ready to get into the draft. Even yeah. I said, I've said this on the show a million times. These kids do their high school commitment announcements on TV, ESPN. They have the hats. And if you listen to them, Vince, they all say the same thing. I'm taking my talents to Miami for the next three to four years. And I've always said this. They're halfway out the damn door before they get here. That's where their mindset is at. Well, the problem is, is the problem comes in Little League now because – you got little league and you go recruit this little league guy, this little league kid, and you treat him a certain type of way to come play for your ball club, right? Now you go to high school. Once again, now high school, they're competitive. Now they're recruiting. They're going to pluck guys because they want the number one team in the state. And, and high so school wanna, NIL has started, by the exactly. way. Exactly. So it's like high yeah. school. So, you know, and now they go to college, you know, with the portal. If a coach yell at me, I don't have to take that. I'll get in the portal and I leave. So as a coach, your hands are tied saying, okay, I got to treat him a certain type of way. If not, he's going to leave and go play for such and such, such and such. Okay, and now we get to the NFL, but see what they fail to realize, that shield don't bend to no one. So that shield is that shield. That shield been around before us and is going to be here after us. It's a certain way that shield is handled. So if you get in cater your whole life and all of a sudden you at the NFL in that shield and you think you're about to get catered in, like, listen here, it's a production company. It's a production league. If you do not produce, I don't care if you round one, you're number one overall, or you're the last pick of the draft. If you do not produce, they will find somebody that will. You don't have, they don't pay you to go to class. You know, like it's this is a real deal. They're not going to be like your mom and dad to make sure. No, they're not going to do that because if they see a problem with their product, they will make sure they clean that product out. That's just the way it is. Well, we got and, a lot more. Oh, so, sorry to cut you off, Vince. Uh, yeah, no, that's it. No, that, that, I'm just saying that's that's the problem. So it starts yeah. all the way down the little league, all the way through. You yeah, well, we got so much more we want to get to here with Big Vince Wilfork, legendary University of Miami and NFL defensive tackle. I, I want to dive deep, Bruce and I, on the defensive tackle position with Vince, and yes. got to get some stories from 01, uh, you know, the glory of 01, and then what should have been glory in 2002. Yeah. I'm, I'm still angry about that oh, 22 yeah. years later. We all life. are. I have not let that go. (laughs) You guys want to keep it locked right here. We got Vince Wilfork with me and the Truth Teller. We are only getting started on this episode of Locked on Canes. And my friends, I'm only getting started on FanDuel. We're winning money. I know football, football's on hiatus right now, but we got college basketball heading into the tournament. We've got NBA games happening every single night, NHL. Folks, you can get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel. America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Uh, I've been cleaning up on these Miami Heat bets lately. They've been so good. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making this Truth Teller Tuesday episode of Locked on Canes. Your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube and we're part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Bruce Warner and I are joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Vince Wilfork. Now, you know, Vince, you were, and I don't think it was a coincidence, but you were part of a lot of uh, winning teams throughout your college and professional career and high school and, and so on I'm sure uh, you know you won Super Bowls in New England but was there anything like that 2001 national championship team because you, you especially look we knew at the time how talented you guys were but now you look back on all the great NFL careers and all the Hall of Famers like what was was there anything else like that team you played for in 01 and there's a future Hall of Famer right there along with Gore and a bunch of other guys Absolutely. 100% we're all going in yeah, yes. I hope so. Hopeful, you know, but that team was so special. Um, you know, looking back now, 
we knew how good we were then, but we were challenged so much from our, our coaches, from Andrew Swayze, our strength and conditioning coach. I mean, he kept us locked and loaded. No matter how good we thought we were or what we did, he made sure, like, he kept us humble. And he would he would work us into the ground. And I remember one day after a game, it was a Sunday we came and we played the Gators. And we went up to the swamp. First time they put us back on the schedule, we went up to the swamp and we silenced them. And um, we were so pumped, right? And we come back, <laughs> we come back home and Sunday we go to practice and everything. And, you know, he lining us up and he's telling us, you guys think you got, you think you did something? Like, we ain't do nothing like like what you thought you did and he started telling us all the negative stuff we did you know and he ran the hell out of us and it got to a point where he thought he would break us and we just <laughs> looked at each other and we like you can't break us and coach you can't break us we'll sit out here and run all day you will not break us <laughs> and he just kept running us and we was running and laughing at that point i mean it became more of a mind over matter and show you that, hey, we can be better. And Coach Swayze got exactly what he wanted out of us. Just that whole grit and that grind, basically just the, just the, the, the fighting, you know, as a team and depending on one another. And he just kind of smiled at us and he ran the hell out of us now. Trust me, we ran a lot, but it didn't matter about how much we was running. It was all about we a team. We're going to be out here. If he wants us out here all day, we're going to be out here as a team. We're going to pick one, and, you know, we're going to pick each other up. If somebody fall, we're going to stop. We're going to pick them up. We're a family. And that's the that's the stuff I remember. Our leadership started from our coaches. And then from there, you know, you had the Ed Reeds. You had, you know, Andre Johnson. You had the Santanas, the Regis. You had all of these guys now, right? So it was easy to fall in line, you know. You, you. And we, we just knew how good we were, but we know we couldn't let each other down. So we we played for our families and one another. It's like, listen, mm -hmm. I'm going to hold you accountable. We can go out and have fun, but I'm going to hold you accountable. When it's time to put this, this, this you on, you know what time it is. So we held each other accountable. And like I say, we ran, it came, it, it became a point where we could have ran practice ourselves. Because of all the leadership that we had and, and everybody understanding that, hey, this is the one goal, you know, this is the one goal and this is how we're going to do it. And uh, I've learned that very early in my career at UM and, um, you know, going to the NFL, being in a situation with a lot of leaders and stuff. But I've, I've known and I've seen what was leadership. I knew what it was. I know what it took. Um, and it just helped my career, you know. And those are all the things we learned on the green tree, you know, you know just playing for one another. And in the game that almost gave every Miami Hurricane fan a heart attack was the Boston College game. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you something, man. You guys almost made the careers of these cardiologists because all of you, what, <laughs> what the hell is this? You didn't show up to that game. That's for damn sure. Yeah. And you know what? Like I say, every – it's something about those teams that's like in your in your conference or your division in the NFL. It's like no matter what their record are, man, they're going to give you a run for your money. And Boston College was one of those guys. You know, Boston yeah. College just – they just had our numbers. And, and people have to realize when you're so successful, you have a target on your back daily. Yeah. I don't, I don't care about, you know, um, who they play. But when you have a target on your back, the University of Miami, everybody, we in there, they cross eyes. We there. And you have to, we have to kind of be perfect every game. Yep. If a team ain't win in, in, in 10 years and they and we on their list, guess what? They're gonna try everything they possibly can to beat us that one. Like that's what it was. And that's how hard it was for us as, as a team. We knew that going in that. Every week we on somebody chopping block. Like yeah. they want us. You know, you have teams that's waiting next year, like, oh, they they circle us. And when you have a target on the back, how you gonna respond? It's like you're going in the battlefield. You know you better go on the battlefield, but you have to go in and do what you gotta do. What can I do to keep my troops safe and myself safe and, and accomplish this job? Because we know we're going in the battle. We know we have to be at our best at 
every step of the way. So what are we going to do? And um, we just became the, the the leadership and the accountability that we held one another to. And that's you why know, you pulled the game out because you had yeah. that leadership. Well, Quick it, question, it, because Alex and I want to talk to you about the tackle position. Yes mm -hmm. or no, you guys took the Giants lightly, either one or both of those times. No. No? Okay. No. Wow. But see, the thing is, you, you, you're you talking about one side of the ball or the other side of the ball. So their defense from defensive standpoint, no. Nope. Yeah, that, that wasn't Vince's fault with the Giants oh, defense. Was all right. I just, I just think that the, the Giants uh, defensive line wanted it more. Yeah, they were great. It, it, it came down to Giants defensive line versus our O line, and they wanted it more. Simple as that. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't nothing hiding in that. Like that's the truth. Like, and they'll tell you they just wanted the more. They felt they was better than our offensive line. Simple. And, and, and it's those two lucky plays didn't didn't hurt either. The one yeah, to man. Manningham and the one to <laughs> oh yeah, but, you know. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, it's like catch. I mean, it's it's yeah. We could sit back now and be like, God dang, if he just would have. The ball would have dropped or this. Yeah, it is what it is. Everything happened for a reason. You know what I mean? Um, now it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. All right, I got my answer. Well, and, and there's hurts. there's one more thing before we talk more about defensive tackle. Right. Uh, I want to because you know you you talked about that that 01 team, and then of course you guys you were on 02 as well, and you continued mm -hmm. that winning streak oh, right. right up until the final game of the year mm -hmm. where. I mean, you guys had the game won on the field, and then you know what I thought was a, a terrible call basically took a national championship away from you. Yeah. So, what was that adversity like, Vince? After that bad call in the Fiesta Bowl, like, what was it like in the locker room after that? And what was the flight home like from Arizona? I don't remember that because uh, that was the same year I lost my parents. So, oh um, man, yeah. um, you know, I just only thing I remember was. Um, leaving. That was it, you know, um, just leaving. And I can't tell you if I was thinking about the game, I don't care. I can't tell you what my teammates were like because I was in a different place in my life, you know, um, young kid losing my mom at that time. Um, so I, as a football player, I didn't know, like, you know, how we – felt after that game because I had other stuff on, on my yeah, but I sure just did tell you going into the next season um we would we we felt some type of way we did um we felt that we were robbed later on as you know time when we we knew it was robbed we felt we was robbed and but once I tell you let, let me tell you something I like I said before once you have a target on your back everybody will want to get you no matter how you slice, and you got to understand, the University of Miami been having a target on their back before the two thousands. Let's talk about that. We go back to the eighties, so yeah. we've always had a target on our back. And as soon as somebody think they can get us, they try, they try. So I just think that was one of those moments where it was like, you know, no, we can't have them jokers win this. Like, you know? well, <laughs> this is my opinion. To me, that was a bad call, and I get it. But as far as I'm concerned, you had them fourth and fifteen. Yep, and they hit a, an out for 15 and a half yards. To me, Randy should have blitzed. He should have gone after that kid because he sat in the pocket and he, he had time to throw that out pass. Yep. That's where the game was lost because that was fourth and 15. And no business getting the first down. That's my yeah. opinion. Fourth and 15. Like, like I said, I have no clue. I can't, I can go back and watch and just see how it all unfold. Only thing I, when I, one thing I do remember is the quarterback hurt us with his legs a little bit. I yep. knew that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but you know the thing is, it's like it is what it is. We every game you can go through the game and say they would have done this or we would have done that. It wouldn't have led, led up to that, but it is what it is. Like, but fourth yeah. and fifteen against that defense, it, it, I just yeah, that's still, it still bothers me. All right, Alex, let's move on to what we want to talk about. Well, and and, and, and let, yeah, well, I mean, I think everything we've talked about is something we want to talk about, and we're not done yet here with Vince Wilfork. Pleasure of being joined by one of the great Miami Hurricanes defensive linemen. You guys want to keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And I know you're keeping it locked to the awesome new Nissan lineup. I mean, guys, SUVs galore with Nissan? Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to that next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. 
Class exclusive Google built in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone to Google Assistant. Google Maps and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. How about that 2024 Nissan Pathfinder? Has room to seat up to eight, an expansive cargo capacity, and advanced available 4x4 capability. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Just so you know, no spring practice today, Tuesday. They're going to be back tomorrow. Uh, if, so if you're looking for material coming out of day one of spring football yesterday, you can find it from our two episodes yesterday right here on Locked on Canes. And of course, we are going to be all over it tomorrow after spring football practice number two. Uh, we're joined, Truth Teller and I, joined by the great Vince Wilfork. Uh, now, Vince, um, how... How has the defensive tackle position evolved in your mind? Like it seems like, and you were ahead of the curve on a lot of this stuff because uh, you were you were a unicorn, you know, back in your day. But there, there's a lot more premium on pass rushing from the interior, I think, than there used to be. So, how do you kind of view the ideal defensive tackle for this day and age? Well, they're all they're they're a lot slimmer. Um, they're not as big as they, we used to be. Um, they're a lot quicker, a um, lot faster. You know, I think. NFL and, and, and football now is a, is, a, is a scoring and passing league. So it's like you want to get as you know much speed as possible you want on the field to kind of combat what the offense is doing. Um, so that's why I think it's a little different now uh, because of what, you know, what they're asking for. Um, so you can't have a good – you can't have two, 300-pounder defensive tackle that's, that's that the clock holes and they're throwing 50, 60 times. Like it just doesn't work like that. Um, so now I've seen that change over time with myself and now what's going on now, just a lot of speed, you know, a lot of speed, small and speed, speed speedier guys. And cause they want to get to that quarterback and I understand it, um, but I'm still waiting for that one team to really uh, catch everybody by surprise and force people to play the run. Like yeah. I'm going to line up and I'm going to run the ball um, until you stop it. And if you if you want to have you know a nickel defense on there, you want to have your defense attack of two hundred and fifteen pounds because it's speed on the field. Well, I will make sure you pay for that. And I'm just waiting to college level and pro level. Like I'm waiting for somebody to get smart and just. Yeah, but that makes sense though, because yeah, you, it does. you said that the linemen are getting slimmer, and we know that the offensive linemen are getting bigger. They're all yeah. three hundred and something pounds. Mm -hmm. So it just makes common sense. Forget if you're a football coach. Yeah. Run the damn ball down your throat and the stop it. What's the difference in running the ball for an eight and nine yard than throwing it for an eight and nine yard? What's the right. difference? Same. Yeah. Except right. maybe you wear down the defensive line. Exactly. Right. You know? probably, yeah, you're right. It's probably <laughs> better to, better to run for eight nine yards. You know what I'm saying? Run for it. Yeah. So that's that's my flaw. That's how I look at it. Like if I can get it on the ground, if I can pick up you know six, seven, eight, nine on the ground, I will. And if I have to run the ball 50 times and we run for 500 yards, that's fine too. So, but it, it'll prove a point, you know, um, that you cannot disregard the run game in, in, in football because it will come back to hunt you in the crucial moments. Can you describe the difference, if there is one anymore, between the two tackles that are lined up for the Canes? Because they don't play the three. You were, you, you know, you had the two gap in New England. You were at one here. And this is where. Miami has had trouble stopping the run, stopping the run. And, and I know, and you know, and Alex knows, and the fans know, if those D tackles don't do their jobs and those ends get chipped and things like that, that pass rush is non-existent. So yeah. for, talk, talk to us about how important it is for those tackles to create havoc in the backfield. Well, your defensive line, they have to control the line of scrimmage. I mean, uh, that's first and foremost. And, you know, being having gap integrity and understanding, like, the blocks you're getting, you know, and – if you get this block, this means this. I watched us play last year, our kids play last year, and I love what I saw, right? You know, I just seen, I mean, they ran around and play hard, you know, all of that. But one thing I see that um, that they struggle with is they don't know the game. They don't wow. know the game. It's like you line up and you just go forward. You know, you do your job, man. And, and, and 
in, in, in the classroom and, and when you watch a film, coach say, hey, you got the A-gap. They line up and they go in the A-gap, but they don't understand the game. And when you don't understand the game, your play kind of – your play can show. You know, it, I can tell from your play. And that I've seen a lot of that. I've seen a lot of that. And it's just a whole nother level – that you want to get to as a ball player is understanding the game, not just lining up and saying, Hey, I want to get out of here. I want to do three, four years and be gunning. Understand the game because the more you understand the game, the more you'll stay around the game. You know, you, you can have a career that you're, you hanging around the game for a long time. So that's what I see with the younger guys. They're just green. I mean, they don't understand totally. It's too much. It's a lot. It's moving fast. Everything going fast. So, um, what about film fun. study, Vince? It's, if you're at, if you're telling me that these guys, film study has got to tell you what the tendencies are of the offensive mm-hmm. linemen when you're playing. Yeah. I mean, film study will tell you that, you know. Um, yeah. It'll tell you that. Your, your coaches will tell you too. Hey, you know, we, when we call this defense, it's because of this, you know. Um, I think we'll play a lot more aggressive and understand. We'll make a lot more plays up front. Mm-hmm. If we understood the game and understood block reads instead of what the play is, understand how to defeat this block. And by you understanding how to defeat this block, it'll, it'll have you make the plays. You see, I'm not just going to line, line up and say, hey, I got I'm a three gaps. I'm a, I'm a three technique. So I got to stay in this B gap. OK, but what I get from that three technique, what I get, I want to know going in there saying, OK, if I get this block, this means this. If I get this type of block, okay, I got to sit down because it's a double or, or it's hard or it's a way or my, I got to make sure that I stand. But if I know I'm one-on-one on this play and this what can happen, oh, man, look here. The game came to me. So I've always say as a ball player, especially the defensive tackle, is I always wanted to steal a play. I watch film and I said, okay, majority of my, my job is to keep my backers clean. That was my job, right? Mm-hmm. But I also said to myself, if there, what is a, what, let me find one play that I can steal in the game. And that might come from film that I watched of this team, you know, three, four, five years ago. Or if this coordinator was in college and he ran a certain type of offense, I will watch that college film, whatever it may be. But I always try to find one play that I can steal. So I'm like, okay, if I could steal this play, that is like the most remarkable thing ever, you know. Like here I am now. It's like, man, how did you know? You know, right. and a lot of that's um, tendencies. You learn tendencies. Yeah. You yeah. should know the tendencies too. Tendency. And, but but yeah, that's important stuff. Yeah, tendencies, man. Just understand down the distance and yeah. where you at on the field and who's in the backfield, how many backs you have in the backfield, the wide outs, the splits, the motions. Like when I tell you understanding the game, but I'm not telling them to go that deep. But the guy in front of me, I have to know everything about him mm-hmm. and what he's doing and why he's taking this jab step. And I, you know, I need to know that. And I need to know what is the play. So it's film stuff. Well, this is just a t- tremendous education here from Vince Wilfork. And we appreciate you taking some time after, you know, a truly legendary career. And, and Bruce, you said it earlier. We got to get this guy in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. If they're, yeah, you know. We it, will. We'll have yeah. to make some phone calls, man. Hey, we're gonna see, baby. Like Are I said, I'm college gonna... Hall of Fame. Yeah, no, 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 no. Ne- no. Neither is SAP, believe it or not. No. Wow. And no, I wrote really. a letter to them, but I don't really? know. The hell. Yeah, SAP should be in there. Sure, he should be. It's he ridiculous. should be in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he. Uh, what he meant to college football, absolutely. You know, uh, Jerome Brown and Cortez Russell SAP. Look here, those was the guys I followed. You know? right. Like I wanted to be those guys. You know, why not? And they all had a hell of a career. Jerome Brown probably was the best out of all of us. Yeah, and people don't, and people don't even oh, understand. Right? JB, right. you know, JB was the baddest boy ever, you know, and I give that props, you know. So, um, we have a tradition of defensive tackles, you know, and I want these guys to understand that. Like, man, we have a we have a we have a we have a long list. I mean, you pick a position. And then you go to the NFL and see the type of that position, what we did, you know, mm-hmm. and have have like the confidence and have the like the whole understanding of what this youth stands for. Understand that. Understand these people that played before you. Yeah, they we might be dinosaur and old age who you got, but mm-hmm. listen, we laid they laid the foundation. 
understand that. And I don't think we get that anymore. You know, I don't get guys really uh, understanding. Because we're not winning and we're getting dished, dished by ESPN and every little stupid. Everything. Man, we never, like, they, they, they beat uh, Middle Tennessee State. What are you serious? Yeah. Like, we, get, we have to take back that pride. Like, we have to take back, like, we ain't taking no crap from nobody. Like, this is, it has to start somewhere. It has to start somewhere. So it's like, I'm ready for that to happen. And I think the more confidence these guys get and they understand they can do it, Mm-hmm. It's all about just doing it, you know. Um, so we'll get there. I think with Mario leading to him, I think we'll we'll get there. You know, we just need the recruits. We need to keep South Florida in South Florida. Like that's how we built. This is how we were built. This is how the Hurricanes was built. We South Florida. This is it's a reason that these other schools all come to South Florida to recruit. It's a reason. It's a reason that if you look across the NFL, you have some type of connection. That kid that, that, that these players lead from Florida, if it was college, born, high school, there's a lot of Floridian going on in the NFL. It's a reason. It's a reason. So these kids need to understand we, when they're in our backyard, why leave your backyard? Right. You know, yeah. but we got to start winning. Yeah. Winning is everything, it takes care of everything. Amen to that. Well, Vince, I appreciate your time so much, and and we no won't problem, be strangers. Man. We'd love to have you on again sometime. And Bruce, uh, fantastic job with uh, with your continued recruiting. We might have to get you on Mario's staff. <laughs> yeah, well, thank I, you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. I really appreciate. It. I'll see you out there, either at, yes, at the spring yes, game or at the on the field, whatever. We'll get together again. Well, I'll be down there in the spring, so you'll see me around I'll see you there. Then. All right, We'll, we'll okay. see you then. We'll talk to everybody next time on another episode of Locked on Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.